Hi there and welcome. As promised in the stock battery options video, uh, today we're going to do a charging and discharging video where I present my best tips and tricks and suggestions for charging and discharging the batteries. So let's start with modified. By modified I mean open modified 12 scale, so no motor limit and boost and turbo being allowed in the speedo. So that's a one cell pack and um, modified touring car. In this case, it's a pack for outdoor racing, the 2S57. But um, for indoor racing, we use the Shorty um, 4200 packs. So the modified charge tips and tricks apply to those three classes or those three variations of modified racing. Uh, for modified racing, the requirements and expectations from the batteries are a little different to stock racing, hence why the charge and discharge methods also differ. For modified, I personally feel there's no need to charge the batteries um, any higher than 10 amps. I actually charge my batteries at 9 amps only. I sometimes discharge the batteries to 3.3 volts per cell after the run. And why do I suggest doing this? Because after you finish your, your run, your five minute run or your eight minute run for 12 scale, you discharge the battery, the 3.3 volts, you can see exactly how many milliamps you have left in the battery. And that way you can see how much, how many milliamps you have to play with basically. Uh, and that information is important for you to be able to set up your, your uh, speedo and your gearing and basically your, your motor configuration to match the track that you're racing on. So obviously it's a question of runtime, but you can also read other data out of the, the battery consumption, such as excessive wheel spin, uh, excessive braking and so on. Are you being efficient uh, with your driving? That's what you can gather out of the, the milliamps that's left in the battery after the run. So I suggest doing that. Uh, don't charge any higher than 10 amps for modified. By keeping the amp rate and the charge rate low, you also preserve the life of the battery, so the battery will last longer. That applies to all batteries uh, on the market, uh, not only Nosram, it's a general uh, rule for battery charging. For modified, I typically discharge at a standard rate, and by a standard rate, I mean 20 amps. So most modern chargers on the market, they can, they can discharge at 20 amps including this eye charger, which I have here. Uh, so this charge at 20 amps down to 3.3 volts per cell, as previously mentioned. And there's a couple of tricks that you can use for modified battery charging, especially for smaller tracks and for indoor racing. Don't charge your battery fully. Charge it to, instead of 8.4 volts, charge it to 8.3, 8.2, or even 8.1 volts, because for some tracks, that's just enough uh, you're going to have enough capacity to finish your run. And the benefit of starting the run with a lower voltage is that the voltage doesn't drop as much during the run. So instead of a, a, a curve that goes like this, it's sort of a, a milder decline of the voltage during the run, which means uh, you can focus on your driving rather than trying to manage the, the change of the punch that happens during the run. So better drivability and obviously starting the run with a lower voltage makes the power band less punchy and uh, smoother and these days when we were mostly overpowered this can really make a big difference in terms of consistency and lap time so please try charging your battery to a lower end voltage for stock racing i'd like to clarify first of all that six and a half turn blinky 1s so the Ephra modified class for trial scale is included in um, the stock raising charging tips and tricks. Stock raising requires uh, the absolute best performance out of the batteries because uh, you're limited by the, the power output of the motor. So you want to try and maximize your, your battery performance. How can we do this? It's pretty simple. Um, really you you want to try and lower the ir the internal resistance of the battery pack and basically the only way of doing that is to 
generate heat in the battery, which you can do by charging or discharging. A lower IR means more punch and less fade during the run. Cycling the battery, which means discharging the battery before you charge it, will be the most efficient way to generate heat in the battery. So I'm going to explain how I do this for stock racing. Before proceeding, you should update yourself on the race rules for the competition that you're participating in. Uh, some race series and rules now, they only allow charging at a certain uh, max um, amp rate. So you cannot charge uh, as many amps as you want. And sometimes the rules also apply to discharging. So before you start charging with um, using my, my suggestions that come next, make sure that you follow the rules for the specific race that you're participating in. Um, if there's no charge rules for the race, I prefer to charge the batteries at uh, 40 amps. So 40 amps charge and discharge. And um, to be able to discharge at 40 amps, for example, you can use a eye charger, which I have here. This is a um, pretty common charger now on the market. To be able to discharge at 40 amps, because you can only discharge at 20 amps with the standard configuration eye charger. To discharge at 40 amps, I recommend using a resistor bank, which I will instruct you in a separate video on how to set up the resi resistor bank to be able to discharge at 40 amps. And um, I will publish that video on my YouTube and Facebook channels. So please take a look at that video if you want to learn more about setting up the resistor bank for your eye charger. So basically my process is like this. I start my discharge process from storage mode. I discharge at 40 amps down to 3.3 volts per cell. If the battery has a outside temperature of more than 40 degrees Celsius, I usually let it cool down for a few minutes before I start the charge process. You can also set up your eye charger to have a cycle in which you let the battery cool down a few minutes before it starts charging. So you can, you can set up the charger to do that automatically. But if it's more than 40 degrees, I usually let it cool down a little bit before starting the charge. And then I start charging at 40 amps and I let it uh, finish at 8.4 volts end voltage, so total end voltage, so 4.2 per cell. Um, you, will wanna, you will want to try and finish the charge um, quite late before the start of your run. So that when the battery finishes, it's still warm. And when it goes in the car, it's still got some heat in it. So you don't want to finish charging too early. Um, keep in mind that some race regulations also prohibit uh, excessive heat in the battery. So they actually check the, the battery uh, temperature before the run when you go through tech. So keep that in mind if, if uh, the battery temperature is getting teched um, you need to use a temperature gun to make sure that you're not exceeding the, the maximum temperature allowed. So keep track of the temperature of the battery. I would say that the ideal temperature of the battery before the start of your run, um, external temperature will be around 40 degrees Celsius, between 35 and 40 degrees. That's where I've seen my lowest uh, internal resistance on the charger. Some tips that apply to both stock and modified charging. At the end of the race day, when you're done uh, using your batteries, put them in storage mode, which means 3.8 to 3.9 volts per cell. Um, how you reach that voltage doesn't really matter. You can uh, charge or discharge, or you can simply uh, take it out of the car after your race. And if it's 3.8 to 3.9 volts per cell, that's perfect, then you can just leave it you don't need to do anything if it's outside of that range yeah you will need to put it in the, the perfect um, storage voltage for uh, preserving the, the life of the battery pack bonus tip if you don't plan to use your batteries for a while let's say weeks or even months first of all uh, put them in storage mode and if months go by Ideally, every month you should cycle the batteries, which means charge and discharge at least once. Um, the, worst things for the, the worst thing for the batteries, except for being stored fully charged or fully discharged, 
is for the batteries just to sit around for a long time without doing anything. So ideally cycle them once a month to sort of keep the battery alive. And that way you'll have a better performance for when you start using the batteries again. Thank you for watching and uh, don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions or feedback if you need any clarifications at all.